G'day, g'day. Clayton here from XY Advisor, myself, Ben, and Adrian. We all just interviewed dad joke connoisseur Shane Black. So a bit of a background. He, he grew up in a town called Dunny Do, and how unbelievably Australian does that sound? Uh, then becomes a police detective and goes on to become a financial planner. But the interesting thing that I found about Shane is his exploration into the world of how to run an efficient and effective business and how to provide efficient, effective, and valuable advice. Um, He's obviously thought about a lot of these things quite a lot, and we draw um, a few of those key lessons out. So hopefully you enjoy. This episode is proudly sponsored by NetWealth. Launching nearly 20 years ago, this ASX-listed company is ranked number one for overall platform functionality and user satisfaction by investment trends for the past three years. As the financial advice landscape changes, it's important now more than ever to embrace new technology and enhance the way you do business. With this change comes your chance to innovate, explore new perspectives, and realize new efficiencies. NetWealth is here to support you on this journey by providing you market-leading technology, excellent customer support, and expertise to help you innovate in your business. Visit the NetWealth website to learn more and get the PDS which clients should read before making a decision. Products issued by NetWealth Investments Limited. Do you have kids? I do. Because yeah. some of these dad jokes that are just coming out left, right, and centre. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't understand. It's like you turned one yesterday. So, oh, right. although I've been practicing dad jokes for about five or six years before he even was conceived, so <laughs> I was getting him plenty of practice. Well, you've still got a couple of years of him giggling without even knowing what yeah, you're saying. Right. So, that's right. you're going to be the funniest guy in the so, world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he thinks I'm hilarious. I'm like, you don't even understand what I'm doing. <laughs> I must so, look hilarious. So you started your business in May, is that right? No, I started back in 2014. It's almost been four years exactly. It was October 2014. I was previously oh. under a a branded advice offering. Uh-huh. And so we only rebranded uh-huh. to our own brand in May. So oh, okay. at that point, I was just trying to keep it secret because it was yeah, I didn't right. like being in the branded advice offering. So, oh, I yeah. see. So it's all say, it's like, all Shane now. It's just uh... yeah, it's just Shane. Yeah, that's that's, that's the business. Yeah, Shane. I love it. Come Inspector back. Shane, yeah. Dunny do. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so yeah, because I was going to like, but I suppose even at four years, it's like, how do you balance that? You got a one year old. Yep. Um, w- with all the things that you know you're trying to work on in the business. Yeah. So, you know, I don't have kids, but uh, yep. I wonder. If I did have kids, how, how would you find the time? How do you find that? Yeah, it became incredibly tough because we sort of, when I left, I was previously with MLC Advice, and when we left that, we left a whole heap of clients, well, I left a whole heap of clients behind. So the, the the business shrunk, but I had more stuff to do because it was obviously, you know, when you're switching licensees, if you haven't done it, don't do it if you can get out of it because it's a pain <laughs> in the ass. Mm, but, yeah. Um, yeah, ever since my son came along last October, you know, time has been something that's been on my mind a lot and it's kind of like you know we've been trying to make the business more efficient but at the same time we've still got this other stuff that we need doing so it's just been a bit of a process it's tough and sometimes you still got, still got to work after hours but you've also got to know when to you know pull the pin and say that's enough time to go and um make my son laugh uncontrollably just for existing so, yeah. <laughs> did you did you know there's a big difference in support like you obviously coming from what's supposedly a more structured support environment yeah did it did you notice the difference when you... Coming from MLC Advice? Yeah, like there's not, a lot more infrastructure there, but how yeah, much was the gap? Uh, not that big, no. no. The infrastructure, um, yeah, the support wasn't as much as it probably um, could be mm-hmm. with MLC Advice, hence why I probably left. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, not so much lack of uh, the less support or anything like that. So it's still been pretty much the status quo. We just changed you know, the signage on the office basically and... Started changing the websites, and we only launched one of them last week, I think. So it's it's been a bit of a process. But Multiple websites. Uh, yeah, because oh, we've got a, fi- a mortgage Paddy's broking. Interest. Mortgage Multiple, broking, you mean different uh, business as well. And, yes, well. I like it. Yeah. So, and are you breaking yourself? No, my wife is. Okay. Yeah, technically it's a side hustle, but I call myself the uh, air quotes if you're listening relationship manager, which means that I hunt the business and <laughs> get people in the door, and then she takes over for all the compliance work. So Good I do all tech. the fun stuff, and she does all the... Um, not important fun stuff. stuff. Import, important. Yeah. That, that's a good word for not fun stuff. Yeah, important stuff. I'm going to start using that. Yeah, can you do the important stuff for me? So I'm, I'm keen to to sort of explore this a little more though. But you like in terms of what your hours look like before before your son come along to yep. to what it looks like now. How like what does that look like? Uh, good question. Um, still do probably more than 50 hours a week in the businesses. 
Um, but it's just the time changes. So, for example, on Mondays, I look after my son. So it's a non-negotiable. I work from home. But the reality work. is, I like this quote. yeah. It, I, I, if you're watching, if you're listening, it's very hard to see me do the air quotes. So uh, maybe I should announce it. <laughs> if you're watching the video. Hey, there's an air quote in there. But um, um, yeah, so Mondays I look after my son. Uh, so very little work gets done. So maybe two or three hours during the day. But then when my wife comes home, I will usually spend an hour or two of her, and then I'll work from maybe six or seven p.m. until eleven or twelve on a Monday. So I still get in maybe seven or eight hours, but it's just the day is split. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you just kind of find a way. So rather than doing, you become very good at delegating as well. So I've got one full-time staff member here in Australia and it's just, um, and I've got some help, a virtual help overseas. Uh, so it's pretty much just become very good at delegating. It's, yeah. you know, I don't All the things. important stuff. The important stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not fun. It's it's important. <laughs> You're going to run with that, are you? Yeah, I am. I have to say it three times to commit it to memory. So. <laughs> Do you find yourself being like any more, less or otherwise efficient? Like, given that you've, you're splitting your time in the, the way that you are? No, I think uh, the efficiency side, I think I've got pretty well. So we tend to batch tasks and um, like we work on workflows and, you know, how we do stuff a lot to try and get that efficiency there because I hate double handling stuff. I hate wasted time. Um, yeah, I'd rather be doing more fun stuff than... Yeah, the important stuff. <laughs> Third time. I yeah, yeah I've got that. it. I yeah, it's that. committed to memory. How's your... So a lot of people... Um, some people have gone to get a virtual sort of support yep. and some people haven't. What would you say to people that are thinking about it? Do it, yeah. Without hesitation, just do it. Even if it's with – it doesn't necessarily need to be, um, you know, client data stuff, so people who are worried about the, the privacy stuff. One of the first things I originally outsourced was my, um, was my email inbox because it was becoming sort of overwhelming so That's I bad. actually had a guy that would triage all my stuff. He'd sit in my inbox and at 4 p.m. every afternoon, we'd have a 10-minute meeting and he'd say, this is what came through. This is what I've always already handed off to someone else. This is what you personally need to do. This stuff I wasn't sure about. And um, so that was one of the first things that I actually um, outsourced. That's phenomenal. I tried doing exactly that. It yeah. didn't work for me. It yeah. works for you? Yeah, yeah. It's like anything. It's kind of you need to have some rules set up. And every time a new situation comes up, we would just say, this is a new rule. Mm. And so if you didn't know something or something was handled incorrectly, I'd just say, this is a new rule. This is, if this happens, then do this. Yeah, that's mad. Oh. And you've got two two different websites as far as I can tell. Yep. Um, One and a half, I'd say. What comes through I from this? I think I've just got four or five. So do you really? I actually own 30-something, but I've only there's only four or five. So this one I haven't updated in months, but... Uh, is that during the name selection process? Yeah, yeah. So this is this is Shane Black dot me. So this is this was like oh. candidate one for the business name. And I was like, no, nah, no. Nah. This is when it was Shane. Yeah, just Shane. But that was unavailable. Shane dot com was unavailable, surprisingly. <laughs> but Shane Black dot com was unavailable because apparently it's a Hollywood director. He did. Uh, yeah, so don't confuse me with that. But, um, Inspector selfish. Black financial planning. That's, is that, is that's that in there? Constable yeah. Black. Constable Black. Detective Black financial planning. Yeah, yes. that's kind of yeah. what made. Let me investigate your finances. <laughs> Dude, you have to do it. Um, do, do, does this website bring in any clients? The one that's specifically about you? Because I'm no. looking at it now, it doesn't really talk. No, so it no. doesn't. No. So we started this one, and the whole thing about this was it was a placeholder, mm. and we're, we're actually going to get that rebuilt out. Okay. So this was more for any stuff that was wasn't related to financial planning. Yep. So obviously I, I geek out in the, the business a bit. Yeah, the fun stuff, like business automation and a bit of marketing stuff. So this was a placeholder and then we're going to sort of produce content to go on there eventually. Interesting. Well, talk us through, so how many different funnels do you have? Um, probably only in terms of funnels for clients. Um, yeah. Not that many, not as many as I'd like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So How I've does done... the Facebook bot go? Well, Which one? a bit of a look on your site, on the finance site. Yeah, the, no, that's good for site. the um, the ManyChat one. Is that the one? Oh, you got it popping up on the screen. screen. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you go to pearlfinancial.com.au, yeah, which up. is the mortgage broker site. And then it was like, authorise me to scrape all of your data and own your life. I was like, nah, yeah, man. that's right. So <laughs> basically, <laughs> while, we're having this, while we're having this interview, I've already got his bank account details. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I mean, we're we recording? Oh, no, no, it definitely wasn't me. So if you go there, there's, there's a pop-up. And that's actually, 
it actually works well because if you click and do authorize it, then you get added to an audience in ManyChat, which is Facebook Messenger. Mm. Yeah. So we have a few different lists. So we have a list in uh, Xplan, which is obviously financial planning. We have a list in Podium, which is the mortgage broking stuff or Salesforce, I think it is. And then we have a marketing list with Active Campaign. Another list with ManyChat. Uh, so there's this. Is the, many uh, are many people going on to this chat bot? Oh, we get a few a week, but it's yeah, not right. It's not massive. Not many. That's like false advertising, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's many a, chat. Yeah, few chat. Yeah, <laughs> should call it a couple chats. A couple chats. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it depends on the time frame, though. If you look over maybe a year, it's many chats over yeah, a year, but uh, a, a couple of chats a good, over a week. That's a good so. point. <laughs> <laughs> It's like anything, right? Investment returns over a couple of days. You know? have, you, have you put much of um, effort into the responses and the automation around that discussion? Yeah, so we do a lot. I've done a lot of testing with the automation. We use uh, it's UR, it's the URL ref tool. So you can actually trigger an automation in ManyChat. Oh, yeah, RF or something. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I RF. think so. And there's another one called a JSON. So a JSON yeah. tool is what you use on Facebook when you're doing an advertisement on Facebook. And For those of through. us who have no idea what you guys are talking about, yep. what are you talking about? So the, 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 I think it's URL ref, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but if you place a link somewhere specific, whether it be an email or whatever, someone clicks on that, it triggers an automation or a message or a flow in many chats. So it goes through to Facebook Messenger. Oops, shouldn't touch the desk. It goes through to Facebook Messenger. And uh, then it will ask them a specific question. And depending on the response, you can sort of branch out with different responses. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it's smart enough to understand the responses. No, or- so there's, you can either have keywords or you can have buttons. So the buttons are te- tend to be there to lead the conversation. Yes. Air quotes again for the listeners. <laughs> and um, or the, or they sometimes you can put keywords in. So, for example, just the other day someone messaged me and said, do you do construction finance? So he entered the, the bot and then clicked, you know, it was like new lending or something, and then, you know, do do construction finance. But we didn't have something set up to respond to that, so I had to respond to myself. I went, no. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was commercial finance. So he's like, can you help us borrow $100 million? And I'm like, and we don't even know where to start. Yeah. Could you <laughs> One a, million dollars. Could you imagine <laughs> going onto a chatbot to ask her a hundred million dollars? Yeah. That, that's the. I used to get that stuff on LinkedIn though. People like commercial on. finance, business finance stuff as well. Like, yeah. Do you know anyone that you can introduce me to that will give me heaps of money? It's like, uh, no, I don't. I want wow. Heaps, yeah, I want heaps of money. This is 2018. Yeah. You know, the the barriers to the conversation or where the conversations are happening. That is different, you know, whereas before, I was even speaking to someone earlier this week and they was like, they said, I, they came out to my office and they said, I just wanted to, you know, see you face to face, eyeball to eyeball, because there's nothing like having a meeting face to face. And mm. previously we had a Zoom meeting and I was like, the Zoom meeting was fine for me. Mm. So just different, you know, different generations or different, uh, the barriers to the conversation are, are changing. Or so oh, the work. trust building process. That's right. So he's 50 something and then mm. he still needs to sit in front of someone to trust them. Mm. Whereas I'm like, you know, as long as we have a Zoom conversation. Yeah, we're down for it, type of thing. You know? do, you, do you do much Zoom stuff with clients? Not, uh, not as much as I want to. So yeah. we're sort of moving towards that more and more. So we still have some clients that insist on on meeting face to face. I'm like, that's cool as long as you come to me because we don't want to keep it efficient. And now I've got the baby, it's kind of like we're very guarded of the time of my time. So yeah, I want to do more. And depends. where do you get your clients from? Mostly from internal referrals from clients and then obviously the strategic partnerships, accountants and real estate agents and, um, yeah, all the, um, what they call them, COIs, I think is the industry standard. So yes. referral partners. Uh, centres of influence. Yeah, centres of influence, that's it. And so do you have a structured <laughs> process for referrals? Is that how you get your referrals? No, not so much. No, no. With our clients, we do have a structured process. So every three months I have a little pop-up that pops up in my um, calendar. And that triggers me to actually reach out to the clients and ask a specific set of questions. And I usually just change the segment of clients that I'm asking. Yep. So it's usually a four or five question sequence. And it just starts off with, you know, hey, do you need any help with anything? And it's a, if it's a yes, we help them with it. If it's a no, they're going, you beauty. So one of you could help me with something. And looking to introduce people exactly like you, blah, 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 blah. And then, so we get a few. That's a great that. first question. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good first question. Actually, it reminds me of how I tell people that they've got something in their teeth. Yeah. Because it's a problem that I never knew how to solve. Mm. But I figured it out. It's, do I have anything in my teeth? Yeah. And then they say, no. And then you can say, because you do. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So that's a great way to intro the topic. So Mm. similarly, 
you say, is there anything I can do to help you? Yeah. And then they say no, and then you say, well, do you mind helping me? Exactly. That's brilliant. But it's a genuine question as well. So, you know, it's an excuse to reach out to my existing clients and say, hey, is there anything I can help you with? And if, if yeah. they do say, you know what, I was thinking about this and I was, I was meaning to reach out to you, but are you beat Which me to it? Which is brilliant because then you're doing your job. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're doing what I'm getting paid for. So yeah, it's, um, correct. It's always a bonus yeah. for everyone involved. <laughs> yeah. Um, Fee for service. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that's uh, that's a good, um, yeah, where we get lots of our clients from, existing clients, and then you know, the centers of influence. And, yeah. I got a good question the other day. I went to this dinner with um, Mark Bynum, organized with the AFA guys, with the, this like guy from the US, Don Connolly, super successful financial advisor. His wife had the biggest engagement ring I've ever seen in my life. Like it was, it was like Kanye style. <laughs> like it must have been. Oh my god. Anyway, so he's quite. He's like he's a little bit old school. Super amazing though. Um, but he was all about good good questions and pretty much like an old school lifey, but with a real passion for the people and care and etc. But His question was, and I just used it today for the first time, and it worked really well about asking for referrals. Because normally, when I present an SOA, I have this line in there in the statement of advice, and it says, you know, don't keep it a secret, whatever. And his question was that you ask them, uh, hey, so I really love working with people like you, and I'd love to work with more people like you. If you were me, how would you go about uh, finding more people like you? That's brilliant. Whoa. So instead of it's asking old. for people yeah. like them. And then they're just like, they sit there and they're like. Mm. Yeah. Because not putting like, them on the spot. It's asking, hey, if you were me. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. It's, it's taking yeah, yeah. them out of their seat. Yeah. And sort of seeing it from a third person. And yeah. Say, that's amazing. And then they're like, oh, well, yeah, I suppose it just comes from like conversations when we meet people. And we'll definitely tell them like when we meet people that are in the same situation as us. Mm. I was like. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great. Imagine if yeah. imagine if the answer was, oh, you know, I'd probably open up a Facebook campaign. Uh, you know, I'd probably put on a cost per click at about a dollar twenty, dollar twenty five. <laughs> you know, put in a content, maybe like a free download for everyone. Ebook. Yeah, an ebook. <laughs> and the guys sitting there like, Ugh. <laughs> yeah. anyway, I thought that was good. No, it is. Can't escape that. I think that. Uh, yeah, help, asking for help, like you say, it's, yeah. uh, people want to help people. Absolutely, hundred percent, and it's reciprocal, right? You know, if you've read Influence by Robert Sordini, mm. you know, one of them is reciprocation, one of the six principles of influence. Yeah. So if you're, you know, if you're helping them first, which we all should be trying to do, then uh, you know they almost feel compelled to reciprocate. Man, uh, that's happened to me several times when you go traveling. Mm. Some Someone comes up and does something for you that you didn't ask for yeah. in the first place and then you end up buying something that you never should have uh, bought. This is LA uh, or Hollywood, right? It's like someone gives you a CD. No, it's that. not. Well, I mean, yeah, oh, that yeah, kind of LA. thing. That kind yeah, of thing. Or, 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 or a simple one is you get at an airport and you're just wheeling your your, um, your bag and then someone comes along and goes, oh, I can give you a hand with it. wheel yeah. to your bag and then they're like, oh, where are you going? You're like, yeah. oh, this direction, and and then you know your your early twenties. Next thing you know, you're being shipped off to some bloody hotel that you never wanted to stay at, and it's <laughs> dripping through the ceiling. Sounds like that. Ever seen that movie Hostel? Sounds like oh. Oh. <laughs> I have actually. Really, yeah. Go I on. haven't specifically. Like, no, I make it out though. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me actually. I went to Africa for the 2010 World Cup, the soccer World Cup, and um, there used to be guys standing on the street with like sticks or something. And you just park, you just park the hire car and you jump out, and then you have to pay them mm. to not steal your car, basically. <laughs> really? Like yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, mind is interesting. Yeah, remember that in South America? Actually, there's just guys that would just yeah, they mind your car. Yeah, that just stand around, and if, if you don't pay them to mind it, they will not mind it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I remember I was in Argentina and everyone was playing soccer, and I was like, "Can I play?" They're like, "Yeah, you've just got to give us a hundred bucks." <laughs> That's when you know they don't like you. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I was like, geez, nothing's changed yeah. since primary school. <laughs> Except now you've got 100 bucks. Yeah. So, you paid it. <laughs> so I paid it <laughs> and bought friends. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you working on in your business now? Uh, we're, in, we're just sort of, after the licensee switch, it's really about consolidating our existing clients and we're sort of just going through a growth phase now. So... We're working on a bit of a content strategy to get a lot more content out there. Uh, just hired a video editor who sits in the Philippines, doing a whole lot of stuff like that. And we're trying to do a lot of content syndication. So film one video, 
the video editor does his thing, shoots it off to a writer for a blog to be written, and uh, we try to get three or four bits of content from you know, one effort, basically, so one video. Yeah, the nice. blog page on your site looks pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that was that's kind of yeah that's the uh, yeah that's kind of been the um, com. the um that's kind of been the the testing ground because when I was with oh, MLC no, I advice uh, when I was with MLC advice you obviously can't do your own blogs because they want you to do yeah. MLC ones and I remember uh, you know a couple of years ago I actually said to them you know you, you've got on your blog page you don't even have a pixel for Facebook or Google Tag Manager or anything you know you can't you know retarget anyone that lands on there. I said, I'll leave it with us and sort of, so I, that's why I sort of express my creativity through Pearl Financial, which is the mortgage broking, just to do the content basically yeah. and get the blogs uh, cranking. So you, so you got the system down pat now where you can just sort oh, of... It's, it's never down pat. It's a lot better than what it used to be. There's always improvements to be made. So the new uh, editor starts on Monday. So it's going to be a whole, you know, bunch of new processes and everything to be built around that. So... Hey, what about any courses or any uh, you know th- structural structured ways? Because u- ultimately, when you're creating content, what that's co- code for is uh, leveraging yourself on a digital right. in, in, in a digital format. Yep. Um, but it, a lot of it's unstructured. Yeah. Um, in fact, the majority of content is unstructured. Um, I've always thought that the more structured content is, the typically it gets better cut through. Is that any part of your strategy moving forward? Yeah, exactly. So it's, you know, one of the thinkings that we've had and one of the things we're working on is that for those clients we can't help from a financial advice or mortgage breaking perspective, and you've kind of got to turn them away. Where do you turn away to? Adrian Paddy. Adrian Paddy, yeah. And now he's sold his business. Not anymore. <laughs> yeah, so now he's sold his business. Exactly, he's sold his business. Can't, can't do that anymore. Can't so. send him to Ben Nash. No, so, you know, is it possible that you make some structured content that addresses some of the fundamentals that you can't deliver cost-effectively when you're doing it yourself or, you know, face-to-face? So if you had structured content just around basics like budgeting or debt reduction or whatever, you know, could you effectively do a course or some sort of, you know, learning module that you can say, hey, you're not quite ready for whatever, or, you know, this is what you may consider looking at before we sort of kick everything off in the future. But what about even for a client that is, like, it fits your, like, it's a, it's going to be a client, yep. but to help with that process of exactly. educating them? Have you... The onboarding process. Yeah, have yeah. you played around with anything in that? Or? No, but it's all part of the plan. So we're just filmed a whole lot of stuff for the onboarding process. So once someone becomes a client, an active campaign, we drag and drop, and then it triggers off a whole lot of automation where it says they get the... The video of it basically goes through the five key principles that we believe you know, makes people a successful client, uh, how to communicate with us. So if you check my emails, I've got like 14,000 unread emails. So I was like, please don't email me because I had to sack the VA that used to do it. So oh. he, he um, one day I messaged him, I said, mate, where are you? I need you to do something. He's like, I'm on a boat. And I'm like, dude, you're supposed to be working away on a boat. <laughs> So to be uh, fair, he was on a boat. Yeah, to be fair, I'm on a boat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I always say to clients, you know, number one, if, you, if you're going to email me, make sure you CC Karina, who's in my business as well, in as well, because I might not get for, to it for a while. But connect with me on WhatsApp or text message. So it's just you got the clients on WhatsApp. Yeah, so I just tell them, you know, if you need to contact me, it's text message, WhatsApp, phone call. If it's something that needs emailed, CC Karina in, and she can usually get to it. She'll get to it same day, whereas me, it's kind of someday. Yeah. How many clients do you have? Just under 100 at the moment. So, okay. Yeah. Across, is that FP or? No, this is FP. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, and how do you charge? Um, money, usually. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Go on. <laughs> yeah. What is this magic? Charging you money. Yes. Do you mean crypto? Or do you mean analog crypto? Right. Analog crypto, yeah. Right. Analog toe. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, fee for service. So we just charge an upfront uh, engagement fee, uh, which is for upfront advice and an ongoing fee. We try and keep it pretty super simple. Yep. And it's just you that does the advice? Just me that does the yeah. advice at the moment. We'd love to... Well, we're, the the vision is to build out to have more advice providers come into the business, so we can fo- so I can focus on w- other things. When you were transitioning into advice, what made you think you'd be good at it? Uh, so when I was in the police, I was a detective for the mm-hmm. majority of the time, which is basically talking to bad people and trying to get them to tell you stuff that they don't want to tell you to tell you. So, were you good at that? Uh, I think so. Yeah. 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 So that. So you use the same strategies with clients. Yeah. Imposing, book. standing yeah. over phone the top book. of the phone. Like, you'll tell me, otherwise you'll get the phone book. <laughs> 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 no, it's uh, so the soft skills are exactly the same. Yeah. Like, right. Everyone says, "Oh my God, it's so different." I say, "Well, no. The, the fact is that when when you're sitting in a room with someone, the soft skills are exactly the same 
and the conversation, the way that you have a conversation, the way that you leave pauses in, and everything we use in an interview or um, you know, anything like that when I was in the police is exactly the same. Obviously, the technical skills are very different, but the actual soft skills are, are yeah, the same. That's so. that's a that's a really cool. So, do you know when people are lying to you in in front of you? And Sometimes. Do you ever polygraph them? <laughs> <laughs> I I'll said just tell it was an emergency, yeah. like polygraph. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. No, it's um, sometimes... Did you need the pizza oven? Like, it's more... No, you <laughs> did yeah. Pizza right. oven. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone always needs the pizza oven. Well, the, the pizza Ducati, oven. Yeah, that's, that's the, the conversation I had soon. Like, I'm thinking about buying a Ducati. It's like... <laughs> the hmm. answer's yes. Yeah. yeah. It's always a yes when it's a Ducati. Was there any other motorbike? Yeah. Like, nah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, you can tell sometimes, less so when people are lying, but more so when they're, they're leaving stuff stuff off or not telling you everything wow. so you know when there's like first level questions and people just give you the answer they think you want to hear and then there's you know ways to uncover you know well, what do you really mean by that type of thing you know so it's good for values based advice because you're really getting down to the deeper stuff where you're sort of getting them out of the comfort zone of saying stuff that they think they should say to saying stuff that they actually mean and what do you think you do really well as an advisor uh probably that it's probably um it's probably you know getting clients in tune with what is important to them rather than what they think should be important to them. And and when you're asking these questions, are you asking these questions in like a, a surface level? Are you asking them sort of what do they want to spend their money on? Or are you diving real deep like what is your purpose in life or somewhere in between or, or what are you talking about? Yeah, more more we start at the surface level mm-hmm. because that's an easy, the easy answers to give. Yep. But then once we start, we obviously work our way down to as deep as they'll, they'll let me to go. Yep. Uh, yeah. To as, yeah. Um, Hello, the, can you go? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so it's it's we. I want to know with my clients what drives them. So it's more than just finances. It's, you know, what, almost like what you said, you know, what is your purpose in life or what would you be doing if money wasn't an issue, all those type of questions. Wow, man, that's cool. And so... You're doing you, – you, four years ago, you start your business. Six months ago, you go out on your own. You got 100 there, you, ex-detective. You're really good at asking questions. What What do you want to be really good at next? I think I think the uh, – uh, it's a really good question, actually. So I think helping people to make an impact, um, both personally and financially, so going beyond just, you know, um, doing what they're doing in their own sort of sphere. Uh, and so being able to amplify either their message through content or anything else, but uh, actually really saying, well, now, you know, once you're sorted, what other impact do you want to make in the world? So sort of going from helping yourself to helping others, basically. And you're in the B1G1 movement? I am, yep, in the B1G1 movement. If you haven't yeah, nice. checked it out, check it out. What's How long have you been in that for? G1? Just under a year, just under a year. Okay. So. So B1G1's buy one, give one. It's yeah. like when someone does business with you and then you do something good in the world. Yeah. So, for cool. example, we've just done a soft launch, something that we haven't advertised to anyone that's not immediately connected with us, but the idea was to save people money on home loans, you know, superannuation, just reviewing stuff, basically. And every dollar that we save, we then donate a day's access to fertiliser and pesticide to a farmer in India so he can generate an income. So, so what's the calculation? For every dollar saved, we give one day's access to uh, pesticide manu- and manure. It is so basically I'm giving a shit, um, which is cool. You know, <laughs> been doing that for years, shit. and now, now you can make a difference. Yeah, that's right. Make a difference. <laughs> every dollar you save yep. from a for a client yep. in tax or whatever, yep. you give a day's access yep. to vital. Instruments stuff. for for shit. For, yeah, yeah. Right. To generate income. So but, that was the you know the thinking behind that was save money and then help them make money. Whoa. Okay. So if you help someone save ten thousand dollars, yep. right? Which is not beyond the realms of possibility. One of the caveats I put on it though was first year savings only. So we didn't extrapolate okay. it. So because if we extrapolated that, I'd probably be broke by now. Really. So, <laughs> yeah. So. No. That's what. I, but, but let's say let's say let's say it's ten thousand. Yeah. You help someone save ten thousand bucks. Yeah. You donate right? ten thousand days access. I, what does that cost? For that particular one, it's like one cent per day. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, but for <sighs> one client last month, we, it was like just under twenty thousand dollars or something. But we yeah. saved them your first first year savings. Yeah. And so that was so you twenty thousand days access. Yep. 
That's amazing, man. Yeah. yeah. And then another thing is, well, pre- previous to that little campaign, we used to, every client we onboarded, every new client, we'd install a well in Cambodia that provided clean drinking water for 20 years. Wow. Yeah, it's a good it's a good setup. Have you met yeah. the guys there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I was lucky enough Paul to. Dunn, Mas- with Masami, Paul, yeah. yeah. I haven't met Masami, but uh, through the, the key person of influence program, they, they had Paul Dunn at their their recent sum event they did yeah and um well glenn carson's massively into it so yeah he yeah. loves it yeah he does it like he's like every person that likes his facebook page he does a yep. thing and then every time they do an event and have someone there they do some something else yeah it's exactly cool, yeah we do it in our business i don't i like what you've got on your site yeah you got the different the widgets um, and everything the yeah. different widgets i don't have the widgets on mine but we just got into it yeah i think i think xy ago. should definitely do something like this I've actually got a uh, a code that you can use to get twenty dollars to get you started if you want. Also, <laughs> twenty dollars. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Shane. yeah but if, hey, if, if it's one cent, that's like I don't know two thousand impacts. Or yeah, something, yeah, so. yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, let's. That's a whole chat. podcast. Yeah. Let's, let's chat afterwards. That's cool. I know. I really dig this. Yeah, it's good, and I like to. You've got the like the map, and you can see where you. you yeah, exactly. No way. Way. And that updates in real time. So if you go to pearlfinancial.com.au forward slash impact, I think it was. Um, you'll see basically, you know, the widgets and, and the reason that we do things. So it's a bit like when you get a bottle of whiskey. I think it's Langeville and, and you can see where your, your bit of peat is yeah. right near the whiskey um, gets made. It's sort of like that, but <laughs> less mud and heaps more better stuff. <laughs> and all just, also just not all for you, just for <laughs> other people as well. Hey, I share my whiskey with other people. <laughs> <laughs> do you, though? <laughs> Oh, yeah. wow, yeah, okay, yeah, I can see this here. You've got this whole map of, uh, yeah. yeah, and okay, it's showing where, where you're from and then shooting it up into places around the world. Yep. And then I guess if you land on a certain thing, yeah, okay, cool. So planetary and support, 110,436 really cool, days of access to life-giving water. We're, fam- we're, we're given to families by Pearl Finance Group. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. That is super cool. What yeah. feedback do you get? Do you get Do you get much feedback? I'll tell you what. Well, I actually use it as a bit of a barometer. Is, is that the right t- instrument? Maybe it's another instrument. I don't know. Compass? I don't know. But to see where we, if my values align with a client. So yeah. the client sort of, you know, if they see that and they're like, oh, you know, yeah, that's not I that give good. A shit. Or, yeah. you know, why don't you just give me the money? That's uh <laughs> kind of like it might indicate that our values aren't aligned. Yeah. And do you even, get feedback? Because do you yeah, tell them? Do you yeah, tell them? Definitely. It's in, it's in my signature to for every email. So oh, yeah. I'm supposed to update it every Friday. Sometimes I forget. But every time, every Friday, we'll just put in, you know, we've donated X amount to this, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. So some clients who scroll down that far have... You're giving us feedback. So. To the end of your emails, you mean? Mm, yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of emails are you sending? <laughs> well, no, funny, funnily no, enough. No I'm wonder actually, the guy was on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually banned from writing longer than three line emails at the moment, so I actually have to use uh, Soapbox. It's by Wistia, so it's Loom, that type of yeah. thing. Yeah, so yeah. If it's longer than three lines, I shoot a Soapbox instead of... Yeah, nice one. You, yeah. you want an app that'll change your life? Marco Polo. Right. Um, that is how, or, because we're, except for the podcast, oh no, we do, we back to doing a meeting a week now, but for the majority of the time, none, when very rarely in the same room at the yeah. same time. And it's, if you think about it, it's Instagram, but for old stuffy business people right. like us. Yeah, yeah. So what you do is you just pull it up and hit the button and then it records and then you hit stop and then it sends it to everyone that you want. So it could be to it's one to really two. not like Instagram. It's actually Sorry, not, not Instagram. Like Instagram. Um, what did I, uh, Snapchat. Sna- oh, yeah. not, it's not like oh, yeah. Snapchat. Sort of, I don't understand Snapchat. I guess well, uh, correct because but it's the idea of you can send video stuff yeah. to each other. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice compliment. We use Slack. We've used Slack for years, yeah. but Slack's really good. But then if you got to say a lot, it's not really great for it. Yeah. And, um, and if that's you've got the, someone that likes to say a lot, you can actually two times the speed so you can get through. Oh, perfect. Messages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is that's vital. Yeah. Benefit. It's mad. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's some cool shit. Yeah. Yeah. Something that. Um, you know, we like doing. We actually had the conference of B one G one in Singapore in July. So oh, you I went to it. Go. Yeah, Paul yeah. Dunn's such a character. He is. Yeah, he's he's seventy four years old. He's actually about to do his last ever world tour. So I think that's happening next month. I think. 
<laughs> so he's a very good presenter. If you've never seen him present, oh, get man, along it's because amazing. it's um, it's kind. Of, if you want to present, it's kind of the good to see how the good presenters present. How many times I say present? That <laughs> it's like four hundred times. But yeah, present. That's right. <laughs> so get along to that because it's uh, yeah. He is a character, a very good presenter. He's seventy four years old. About to pull, pull up stumps. He's handing over to Masami, who's his wife and business partner. So what he started this B one. Yep. Masami right. started it, yeah. really. Yeah, and Masami did Who's Mas- then, Masami? That's his wife. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. It's, um... Oh, yeah, look it only up, started in 2000... Oh, sorry. The, the, the mortgage broke in 2016. Yep, yep, yep. For those, um, for those podcast listeners, Clayton's on the website. I know that it's very hard to hear a website being read, but uh, I can, um, <laughs> I can yeah. talk it through for you if you like. Yeah, no, actually, I'm interested. <laughs> so your mission, yeah, yep, buy your next property... Oh, okay. So while we love to help first home buyers, yep. we also help existing property owners to buy your next property, refinance, or tap into your equity. Yeah. So that's the old. So this needs an update. So it's um, if I had a know it was going to get uh, trawled on the podcast, what if I updated it for? <laughs> <laughs> but basically, yeah. So when we first started that, we really thought that we'd like working with first home buyers, and a lot of that's re- rewarding. Uh, but then. Uh, you know, as the business evolved, we kind of realised that we more enjoyed working with business owners and professionals. So that mission has changed slightly. Uh, and what do you what do you enjoy about working with business people? I'm in the trenches with them. Yeah. Cool. Or I've been in their trench previously. Yes. And there's nothing quite like that to say, hey, dude, I've been where you are or where you're about to be, and this is how you know I navigated it. This is the way that you could... Have you taken someone f- with a financial plan from employment into self-employment? Um, i trying to think. Not really. We've, we've, we've given a, a few clients the confidence to basically ask for pay rises and stuff as a professional. That's awesome. We've had a few people what, what, who... What, what do you do? If, it's just through the conversation and saying, getting clear on where they want to be in the future. Yep. And sort of saying, you know, well, at the end of the meeting, we say, well, okay, we've, after you've gone through the financial plan... So, okay, that's that's my part, but what's three things that you think you should do in the next, you know, 30 days to help you move forward? I actually got an email this morning from a guy and he said, well, one of my things was I'm going to look at his general insurance. And he said, I saved 400 bucks on awesome. motorbike insurance, the Ducati guy, actually. And um, <laughs> um, so that's just one thing. So I get clients to think, you know, what are th- a couple of things you can do in the next 30 days just to keep momentum going and to take the, the responsibility, I guess, away from me putting the plan together yes. and saying, hey... I'll do all the implementation on all the financial crap. What are you going to do? And then get them to do something as well. So you do that for with every client? Yeah, try to. That's cool. So you, you, you almost put the emphasis on them to come up with somewhat of a financial plan for themselves in addition to what you've done. Yeah, or less so the financial plan, but more so stuff that they, can, they think they can do, whether it be from a professional perspective in their business or you know, who else can they ask for help is another question I ask. Uh, or, you know, it, it doesn't need to be in their finances. It can be. Yep. Um, and, yeah, a couple of people are like, well, I'm going to go for a new job. Or I'm going to go get a – I'm going to ask for a pay rise. Um, you know, had a couple of business owners that engaged consultants or coaches to free up their time, that type of thing. So it just depends. I like it. That's really cool. I like it. I can see that coming in the Ben's process now. Yeah. But I like it more on the financial side. What can you do to get more money? Like, what are you going to do now to yeah. increase your earning potential? Yeah, I, yeah. I, look what I've done for you. Now mm. I need you to do something yeah. for yeah, exactly. yourself. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm. And uh, an old business coach of mine used to say, you know, he's a responsibility to people, not for them. He has a responsibility to people, not for them. So, you know, whilst he can show you the way, they've got to take responsibility to actually put it in place. For sure. And that's kind yeah. of the aspect. That's kind of the direction I take and say, "Hey, I've shown you the way, but the best written plan doesn't mean squat if it doesn't get put in the place." And how often are you stay in contact with your uh, clients? As often as possible. So I just look for excuses. So I use uh, an app called Bonjoro too to just shoot like five second, ten second videos and just shoot at the clients and say, "Hey, dude, I just saw this and I thought of you." Um, you know, if it's a, if it's an article on the site on something else, you know, check this out or. If I know they're into something, hey, dude, I saw tickets just come available for some crazy thing that you're in. You're... Oh, and you do that? Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Most of the time I say, yeah, I already knew that. And so I was like, but sucked in, you heard from me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but it's, it's, it's just always constantly trying to open up conversations and yes. making my clients feel uh, comfortable enough to get in contact even when they need it. Mm. Yeah, man. 
Well, that's one of the biggest challenges, like when stuff goes down that they do get in contact with. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And to be the first person that they contact type mm. of thing. And to, to, to be that, you've kind of or, almost got to be on a conversational level. So or charge can, them heaps. Or charge them heaps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like with your membership that's really expensive. Or both. Oh, I better go because it's really expensive. Yeah, that's <laughs> is, right. that, yeah, a, is that how it works yeah. at your business? Get that money's worth. <laughs> yeah, yeah for that's sure. right. Yeah. For sure. Preferably both, charging me. So I'm, so I'm charging you this for your own good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Otherwise, as you say, like people just get things happen, they do what they think is the right thing, mm -hmm. and then they, they're they not doing the right thing. Yeah, but quite simply, like, especially with free stuff, like no one values free stuff. Like how many free downloads do people sign up for and then do nothing with it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, apply a price tag to it. It spurns action, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. So no more free advice. Okay. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> just anyone listening out there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, in the free advice, because we were talking about before about what to do for people who don't become clients, you know, there's nothing you can do for them at the time. Yep. Um, have you ever considered, and, and I'm asking this just because this B1, G1, uh, obviously you've got a, a heart to help people. Yep. Is, is, there, is there anything in your process that you would think about leading people down to, uh, you know, like life Sherpa stuff or, or map my plan or, uh, you know, where there are where there are really um, entry-level yep. things. Um, uh, yeah, is, is, that, is, is that sort of in your frame of reference at all? I've never looked at them, to be honest. But yeah, if, right. if they're what I think they are in its terms of like the, the – Sort of, you know, are they sort of like the low level education based type stuff? Yeah. Do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 That's, um, I've always thought that that's been a massive gap in the industry, in the advice industry, where there's, you know, where is that DIY self directed, um, you know, even if it's a framework type of stuff. Yeah. And, and this is exactly what it is. Um, Vince uh, owns Life Sherpa. Um, and so I'm sure if you gave him a call, you'd say, I'm sending people your way. Yep. If they ever at any stage want to elevate themselves into advice, let me know. Yep. Um, and Paul Feeney started Map My Plan. But I think if we consider the large majority of people, the 80% that aren't getting advice, we yep. need to start thinking in these terms. Um, that's just something I've been thinking about recently. Yeah, yeah. and I think it's... I think it's um I think it's the future of the industry, to be honest. I think that the education-based um, offering yeah. will be the earliest entry to personal advice. Yes. And so I think that more and more people or advisors will start either having something down that level or be yeah. using something at yeah. that level to basically get people ready for personal advice. You know advice. what would be awesome? Mm -hmm. Because it takes a lot of work, Ben. I know that you tried to oh. build one, right? Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised Fucking that there's not actually some there. some company out there that's not doing this already where they just go up to a planner and say, for X of thousands of dollars, we will put your face into this program that just sets up and then you can send it away. But a lot of the stuff's shit, but it shouldn't be shit. Like, it should, there should be smart people that are able to do good things. But I think that they need to partner with the best planners to make that happen. Give me a well. bit of time, so, Benny. And then the best planners yeah. do the, you know, I have no doubt. But I actually know. I get the feeling this is, I get the feeling this is a business idea. Are we going, are we going 25% into a business idea? <laughs> Let's do well, it. Shane, I, it sounds I, like you got plenty of good I'd ideas. Say more 33, 33, 33, and then Paddy can do our paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> the fun stuff. The, fun, the important <laughs> the stuff. Important the important you, guys, stuff. you guys have 100% of the employee pool. I'll take that. 100% <laughs> of the profits? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but it's true, man. It's so hard, that stuff. So I think it partnering is. with these people is, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it makes it makes a lot of sense. I try to do it myself and, yeah. man, so much time. And I spent X dollars plus plus Y dollars as mm, well. Yeah. And, and even more so just the time cost yeah. and and figuring it out. And then you realize that if you've got a, a great, like, you know, a high value advice business, yeah. that's not the best way to spend your time. Like, exactly. yeah, it's, it sounds really appealing and it, yeah. it's like, I'm going to take over the online world and this and that. But you ask these people, like it's, it's not, um, no, it's you just, just go sell more financial plans, find the right yeah, people yeah. that need your help. You know, you charge them a fair fee, help them out. They're that's happy. Right. You're happy. Business is yeah. good. Like it's, um, yeah. it's a specialist thing. Like Clay's saying that I think, yeah, there's yeah, absolutely right. an opportunity there. Exactly. Yeah, I think that you're exactly right. You know, you need to be 
you know, directing your time to what gets you the biggest ROI. And for a financial advisor, most of the time that is giving financial advice to yeah. higher level clients. Yeah. Mm. Not, you know, spending bloody you know, 15 hours editing a video to put on to an education portal or something like oh. that. So, yeah, exactly. Oh. Just so yeah. much more. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> All right, man. Well, um, thanks so much for coming in. If someone right. wants to reach out, you know, I know I know that you like to, as you put in uh, your description to to us earlier, that you like to argue with people on the internet. If, if but I'm sure you're not constantly you arguing. Just with tag him in your comment on the Facebook group. Yeah. 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 Or which website? Right. I'll find you. Which you won't find me. <laughs> with a phone book. Yeah. Who is the detective here? <laughs> Did you ever go into private detective? No, no. Would, would you yeah. ever? No. And if um, you did, would you call yourself a private dick? <laughs> <laughs> You'd have to, wouldn't you? Yeah. That's have to. Yeah. Um, do it. Get really long socks. Mm. Private dick. <laughs> Massive Mon- trench coat. Maybe monocle. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Carry a sore. I'll, I'll, de- I'll definitely do the monocle. That goes without saying. In fact, I've just taken an office and sitting in my pocket here. <laughs> <laughs> And or one of those nice hats. But uh, yeah, if anyone wants to get in contact with me, the best way to do it is probably LinkedIn, Shane Black. I think my URL is financial-planner-sydney. Um, and uh, we can email me, shane at pearlfinancial.com.au or shane at pearlwealth.com.au. Uh, or you can Google me. And um, no, I don't do movies in Hollywood. So if you get that Shane Black, that's the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, thanks so much. It's awesome to meet you in person. And uh, I'm sure you'll be throwing in dad jokes for a while to come. No, thanks for having me. It's been an absolute blast. And uh, yeah, I look forward to yeah, s- uh, spreading my dad jokiness throughout the internet and the XY Advisor group. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Cheers, hey, mate. Shane. Cheers. Cheers, mate.